stopped it quite abruptly, I'm sorry. But welcome to Evening Prayer, and the link is in the comments so you can listen to this very fine organ. And piece of music that depicts the offerings on the day of Easter. The offers for the, for the day of Easter, which is bread and wine, but also offerings for the poor. Our opening praise today on the 2nd of April. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. How sweet are your words to my taste. <clears throat> they are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. From Easter to Pentecost, the Methodist complying that we use in this evening prayer mentions that we may use the word of praise, Hallelujah, God be praised. Because something significant has happened this Easter. We know God keeps his promise. Jesus died and was risen from the dead for our salvation. So we can be joyful and say and sing, Hallelujah. Now for tonight's psalm, it's Psalm 66, and I turn again to Tom's big book of canticles for uh, Psalm 66. And the evening version sounds like this. We open our mouths and want to sing praises as we know we should. But with so much dryness, with lips cracked by fears, with aching and worried hearts, it becomes so hard, our God, and yet we know that you have not given up. You have not been pensioned. You are still busy as ever, imagining, creating, putting together the life we need these days, the peace which can mend the cracks, the grace which can calm fears. Even in these days when it seems that the hope which was just around the corner has reversed its direction. Even in these days when those days we thought were behind us now, lying in wait before us. God is yoked to the workers in the hospitals and homes. The folks going into neighbourhoods, offering jabs to those who need them. The workers trying to stay at their jobs, the teachers ready to adjust on the fly once again if needed for their kids. And God watches over us as we scan the edges of our fears. Continue our God to touch us with your hope, that we may sing of justice to caress us with your grace, that we may learn new songs of mercy, to comfort us as our dearest friend, that we might share the burdens of others as you help to carry all which weighs us down. And whether alone or with all we know, whether tomorrow or in the future, whether afraid or with confidence, we will offer justice, love and healing as our sacrifices of praise, even as we sing our tentative songs to you, knowing you are still listening. You gather every word to your heart, you refuse to take away that love, which is the fountain of our lives. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me not forget to light the candle. So, we have two readings today. First reading is from Exodus 12, 28 to 39. The Israelites, Israelites went and did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, 
from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. Pharaoh arose in the night, he and all his officials and all the Egyptians, and there was a loud cry in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron in the night and said, Rise up, go away from my people, both you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you said, take your flock and your herds as you said, and be gone, and bring a blessing on me too. The Egyptians urged, urged the people to hasten their departure from the land, for they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, with their kneading bowls wrapped up in their cloaks on their shoulders. The Israelites had done as Moses told them. They had asked the Egyptians for jewellery of silver and gold and for clothing, and the Lord had given the people favour in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. And so they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. A mixed crowd also went up with them, and livestock in great numbers, both flocks and herds. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt. It was not leavened, because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. I'm just trying to imagine what that was like. You have to leave home and hearth so suddenly. Our Gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 16, verses 9 to 20. Now, after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe her. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them, as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they would not believe them. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves, as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tom Schumann writes about the verse, but when they had heard he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. And he writes, so who exactly are the people we are willing to believe? Influencers on social media? Or those who transform the lives of kids living on the streets? Politicians who sell their souls to the highest bidders or the person gathering up the rough sleepers to give them shelter? Late night commentators who mock anyone and everyone, all in good fun. 
or the kids who stand up to the bullies of their non-binary friends. I will just copy that text here so you can read it again. Now in the Byzantine lectionary, today is called Bright Tuesday. It speaks of the fifth encounter, meaning that the risen Christ appears to his followers and disciples at different moments and in different ways. And here is a song that refers to one of those encounters with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. I shall find it and play it for you. Our New Testament song is from 1 John 4, verses 7 to 11. A song of love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now will you join me in a moment of prayer. And the beginning of this prayer is also written by Tom Schumann. For what shall we pray this night? Now it is evening, and some of us would like to find that comforting lap to hold us. Some would like a parent to wipe our fears, to wipe our fears off the walls of our rooms. Some want arms to wrap around them and hold them all night long. May you find that lap, those arms, that parent in you, God, of tenderness. For what shall we pray this night? Now it is evening and we would love to share a cup of cocoa and cookies with someone who will listen to our worries with someone who will wipe our face, clean our hands and carry us up to bed and tuck us in with whispers of love. May we find that someone in you, Jesus, who walks our endless days with us. For what shall we pray this night? Now it is evening and our rattled nerves and weary hearts need peace so that we will not lie awake all night with our thoughts refusing to settle down with our legs twitching and our eyes keeping a watch out for those worries which might be hiding under the bed. May you be the peace for which we yearn, spirit of comfort and gentleness. For what shall we pray this night? 
now it is evening, God in community, holy and one, and we place our fears, our worries, our jumpiness over these times into your grace and love. Amen. Let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise and prayer. And I look for our list of intercession. And tonight in the circle, cycle of prayer for the East Midland Synod, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Leicestershire. We pray for those that have been asked to pray for, for Elaine Dre, Secretary of our former Ermine URC, in her pain and anxiety as she awaits surgery. For June Pevy, for Graham Gallup, following surgery, giving thanks for the medical team and praying for his recovery. For the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for Roger Allen and for Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. With Brendan uh, with Brenda Kenyon for Ron Kenyon. With Celia for her grandson Alfie for his recovery. With Alison for her parents, Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. For Barbara Turner of Holy Moorside URC as she awaits surgery. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. For the Reverend Liz Adams. For the Reverend Hamish Temple for her for recovery from surgery. For Father Andy, Moina Hobart's parish priest. With me for my friend Bea. With the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We also pray for members of the royal family for recovery from illness and we pray for peace in the world. We also pray for those especially who grieve for Alison's sister Carolyn and family on the death of Carolyn's husband Steve and praying for a good togetherness tomorrow at the funeral. For those who grieve for John Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. For all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife Lucy and the family. For all who grieve, the passing of loved ones. And with these prayers, we round it all up. And the one and only prayer that Jesus, not the only prayer, I mean the, the special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And for tonight's closing song, I chose because we can sing it again. Hallelujah. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played in a pleased the Lord, but a huge song. Do it goes like this the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, then the major lift, the baffled king compose in hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I've seen this room and I've walked this floor I used to live alone before I knew ya And I've seen your flag on the marble arch Well, love is not a victory march It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah 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 I did my best, it wasn't much I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool ya And even though it all went wrong I'll stand before the Lord of song With nothing on my tongue Now Easter has passed and you may say hallelujah again, so pass it on. Share some peace in a very troubled world. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Good night.